today we'll be going over the correct color space transform settings or CST settings for HLG, otherwise known as hybrid log gamma. Hybrid log gamma is an input gamma that is used on cameras like the Sony a7 III, the Sony a6500, the Sony a7C and most of the other Sony cameras. However, it is most useful to be used in darker situations where you can't use S-Log2. And in a future video that's coming out very soon, we'll be going over how to correctly expose for hybrid log gamma as well as S-Log2. So then you can choose which one to use at which specific time and how to correctly expose for them to get the best looking footage in post. If you want to know the exact settings that we use for our HLG3 profile, check out this video right here, one of the two. So yeah, let's hop into DaVinci and I'll show you the correct settings to use. And um, we shot this on the Sony A7 III and on HLG III. CST is great for transforming colors from one color space to another. You can transform your log profile to Rec 709. So you have a nice normal looking image essentially. Where we're gonna transform HLG III into Rec 709. Then we're actually gonna color grade this clip using something called Digifilm to show you what you can do with hybrid log gamma. If we go into our effects, we're going to go into our library and type in color, space transform, and all you're going to do is we're just going to drag this and put this on top of this node here. So as you can see, this window appears right here. So the first thing you want to do is your input color space is just going to be rec 709. So that's going to be there. Your input gamma, however, if you go down, you're going to find rec.2100 HLG. Now there's two of these, there's HLG and there's HLG scene. However, it doesn't matter which one you choose because they have the exact same effects. So what we're just gonna choose, Rec 2100 HLG. So we're gonna choose that. And then our output color space is gonna be Rec 709. And our output gamma will be Rec 709. What we've done is I've transformed our hybrid log gamma input into a Rec 709 input. And if you're happy with this look, you can export. But what we'll do now is show you how you can actually color grade this and get the most out of HLG3. So what I'm gonna do, so if I was to show you a quick before and after actually, so this is a before, and then this is an after, so before and an after. HLG3 is very close to Rec 709 already. It's just a little bit flatter and it gives you some information to play with in post. If you were to use just a straight Rec 709 look straight away in your camera, then it would be really hard to play with in post. But you don't want to use something that's a really strong look during the night with cameras such as a Sony a7 III because you won't be able to get back a lot of the information. And if you try and push in that contrast and saturation in again, it's just going to break apart. Hence why we don't use S-Log2 during night shots. We'll go over that in the next video. So what we'll do is we'll remove this, press Alt or Option S to create a new node. Let's go over to our gallery and go in Digifilm. Uh, if you want to download Digifilm, we'll put a link in our bio. So if I go into my onto Digifilm, right click and press Apply Grade, as you can see, it's already started to color grade it. So what we want to do is go back into our CST node right here, go to effects. The input color space is already Rec 709. We can leave that, but our input gamma, we can change Rec 2100 HLG. So if you click this, you can see it fixes the clip. And now we can go over throughout our clip and see what needs adjusting. So what we can do is go over to our exposure node right here, maybe push the offset up just to lift those shadows a little bit. If you want to lift shadows even more, you can go into the lift. Lift is shadows, gamma is midtones, gain is highlights, and offset is just overall really. So we can go into our lift or our gamma and you shift that even higher. But if you was to, because this is 8-bit footage, if I was to lift this too much, you're gonna see things start breaking apart. So we don't wanna push it too high, maybe just a little bit, just so if you look at our scopes right here at the bottom, we don't want it to really be clipping too much. So if I was to lift that, out there so if you do a before and after you've lifted it you've got a bit more details back essentially so this is a bit more of a creamy look so you've pulled your exposure up but say you actually wanted to add some more contrast back in so instead of bringing your lift back down you can go into your post con which is here you can push in contrast this will just add contrast quite nicely to the whole area. So if you shift your pivot down, it's gonna hit more of the darker areas. If you shift your pivot up, it's gonna hit more of the brighter areas. So if I was to bring this like here-ish, bring this down, and then you can see, so this is a before, that is hybrid log gamma, and then this is an after, 
this is with Digifilm. So as you can see, there's obviously halation happening on the lights here. So if we wanted to turn that off, we can go to our halation, turn that off. And then what we can do is go over to our global node, create a curve, three spots, one, two, three, bring down the midtones a little bit. Bring up our highlights just a tiny bit and bring down our shadows or we'll lift them a bit, just where it's right and just find a point that, that you really like. And honestly, this is good. We don't want to go too hard. So this is a before and this is an after. You can stay in your global node, shift your gamma towards whatever color you wanted. You can do that. Alternatively, if you found your camera white balance was too cold or too hot, you can go to your camera white balance, go to effects and change your Kelvin right here. So if you, if I was to make this warmer now, but now it's too green, I can then go over to my tint, reduce the tint and make it more magenta. Um, so if you want to get more of a neutral look, you can do that here as well. So it's just very fast and very easy to adjust things. So whatever you want to do, you can easily do it with CST. And that's the great thing about CST is you're transforming HLG into another input gamma usually Rec 7 and 9 with Digifilm. We did it to Arilog, and then we applied print film to it because print films work really well with Arilog um, instead of something like Rec 7 or 9, hence why we did it this way. And then yeah, you're, you're essentially finished. So I hope you found that helpful. Next time we'll go over how to expose HLG3 as well as SLOG2. Thank you.